And welcome, my name is Ben Brownlee for Burris Effects. And in this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at Resolve. And I'll be showing you my workflow about how I finish doing color grading using continuum filters and Resolve groups. Okay, so here is the timeline that we're going to be working on. Well, actually, let's, let's show you a before and after. So we have our before just in the bottom left hand corner. And one of the things that you're going to notice is that a lot of the work I've done to do the uh, the finishing on this isn't to transform everything completely. It's just to give it that final little uh, look, the final little tweak just to, to polish it up. All right, so let's take a look at the working copy. So this is this is the original. And I'll play this through just once and just talk you through what's going on here. So this is a, a quick sort of sports cut um, going through lots of different sports, different locations, different, you know, main people. It's a sort of 20 second spot, just basically showing that sport is universal. So it's, it's a nice little message bringing people together. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that we do go through lots of various locations. And I've tried to match these uh, the these shots between the locations as as much as possible. So what I'm going to be showing you here is really after we've done our primary color correction. So let's come into the the color room. I'm going to just reset the uh, UI layout. So this is the, the sort of basic UI layout. And the only thing I'm going to change is take away the timeline and take away the gallery and just to focus us up a little bit more on the viewer and the notes. So in our clip layout, we can see the different clips that we have in our timeline. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start to set up groups. If you're not already using groups when color correcting in Resolve, then you're missing out on probably one of the biggest features in the last few versions. So with a group, what I can do is I can just select uh, multiple clips together, just either using control or command or shift and click just to select the clips that we want to add to the group. I'm going to right click now and I'm going to go add into a new group. And I'm going to call this one BB uh, early morning. And hit OK. And you'll see at the bottom of these clips now that we have a link to show that these clips are linked together. And we don't have to just do clips that are next to each other. I can select multiple clips across the timeline. So all of these rock climbing clips, and I can bring these into a new group as well. So add into new group, BB rock climbing. Now, if you've got a, like a, a long timeline, this might take a little while to set up, but I would very much recommend taking the time to, uh, to do this. Now, the other good thing about groups is that they are project based. So if we have multiple timelines within the same project. If we have those uh, uh, shots set up into uh, into the same group, we can be affecting multiple versions of a timeline as we go down. So this is this is great if you've got like a long version of a spot plus several cut downs. All you have to do to make a change across the entire project is to make a change to the group or the color correction on a group in a single uh, in a single timeline, and that will go across the entire project. So I'm going to just very quickly come in and just name up all of these groups here. Just make all of these into a new group. Rock climbing I've already done. And let's come into my basketball. You can see I've got another mountain bike uh, clip at the end that isn't in the, the main mountain bike group yet. All I have to do is come in and add this into my BB mountain bike, assign that to the group. There we go. It's in there. Cool. And I'm going to leave my last clip outside of the group as well. So let's uh, let's start with our color correction, shall we? Now, the first thing I'm going to do is actually work on the the last clip. Set this to, to loop and just play this through. This this last shot, it's mainly in here to, to sort of get a nice uh, natural plinth for our logo, uh, but it's not really doing all that much for me. So I'll just come in. I will. Uh, Let's use a color boost to add a lot of color into this. There we go. So this is now a lot more colorful, but it's also brought in 
a lot of color noise as well, which I don't like. So instead of thinking about all of this color noise, what I'll do is I'll just add in another node, add serial node, and I'm going to add an effect. So come into my open effects. I'm going to search for BCC, and this is going to show me my continuum set of effects. Uh, and you'll see they're broken down into categories, and I'm going to be looking for blur. So we're just coming to our blur, and I'll use my fast lens blur. And the only thing I'm going to do here is just change up the blurring so that we're getting rid of the noise. I just want a kind of idea of this palette rather than, you know, any individual element. So there we go. Nice, nice and easy. Let's add another node in here, another serial node at the end. And I can still come in and use Resolve's regular tools to do something like add a little vignette. So uh, add a circular power window or elliptical power window, I should say. Uh, invert that and maybe just bring the gain down, bring the gamma down and bring my softness up. Here we go, let's turn that off there. Just to help us focus attention on the logo there. Excellent. So that's that's fine if we're wanting to do uh, an individual clip and this is sort of standalone, a standalone clip. But what if I wanted to do corrections across a number of different clips? So we've got the, the basketball player here and I've done my main color correction. So everything's kind of balanced up. I just want to give it like a bit of a, a sort of quick look. So let's set some in and out points so I can loop through this and we'll see how we can do that. I'll turn my timeline on, go to my first clip, I for in, take us to the clip after the one I want and then just use the left arrow to go back one. And then I can set my out point there to select a range on my timeline. Now I can loop across a range. Excellent. All right. So knowing that we've grouped these four clips together, I can come up to the top of the node graph and use this drop down menu to select what it is that I want to add correction to. So if we've applied corrections to a clip. We can also apply corrections to a timeline and if you don't have your clip grouped, you're only going to see clip and timeline. But because we do have a group, we can also apply these either post clip or pre clip. I'm going to choose post clip. We'll discuss what the difference is in a, a little bit. And you'll see that my node has a different uh, border around it now. So this golden border means I'm working at a group level. If I'm working at a clip, it's an orange border. And if we come into the timeline, add a node in here. You can see it's blue. So we've got a nice graphical representation of, of what it is we're working with. So we're going to look at group post clip and up in my OFX uh, effects, I'm just going to go BCC plus, and this is going to filter out my continuum effects even more to show us some of the, the newer effects, including the ones that are contained within the cinematographer's toolkit. So basically, the cinematographer's toolkit is a series of video filters that are there to kind of uh, emulate or replicate physical analog processes. So this could be things like you know tints and gradients. Uh, so you have you know physical filters or lens corrections, but we do have things like film styles and color effects like grade. And I'm just going to apply grade onto this node, and I'll pop into the effects editor. Now, Continuum's effects editor is like this, this uh, combination of a preset browser. So we can just sort of have a look at the different presets going on over the, uh, over the left hand side. And we have quite a lot actually with this particular filter. And it's also a way of comparing before and afters. There we go, you know, with different types of splits. And on the right hand side, we have parameters so we can start making changes to these. So we're not sort of locked in to a particular look like we would do if we were just using a LUT. So here I want to uh, find something that's going to, you know, make everything a little bit bluer, sort of, you know, heighten the effect of the, the nighttime. I think let's have a little look. Well, Back to the Future is a little bit too, too blue. Blade Runner's probably in the right sort of area. 
It's a little bit dark though. So what I can do is come over to the parameters, maybe bring up the contrast and the gamma, sort of boost that up a little bit. I also have this flash amount. So the flash puts a color into the, the shadow areas. So if I choose something like a magenta, hit OK on that. Just touch the flash up just a little bit. We kind of get this nice magenta uh, tilt, uh, tinting into the shadows. I like that. When I'm happy, I'll come down to the bottom, hit apply, and that's applied in there. So that's the before and after. And of course, I still have those same parameters that we had in the effects editor just over in our open effects parameters now in the settings here. So if I want to, I can just bring that gamma down just a little bit. And you'll see, we play that back. That's now applied that same effect across the entire group. I'll make changes to that later, but I think that's, that's looking pretty good for now. Let's come over to our, our rock climber. And let's play this one back. Here, I just want to add a little bit more local contrast to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply an effect and it's called F-stop. Just apply this here. I'm just going to gang all of my channels together just to get going. And what I can do with this now is I can start to work with the shadows, midtones and highlights separately, maybe just touching the shadows down, touching the midtones up and then touching the highlights up as well. See, if I, if I move the highlights too far, we're gonna start burning out the skin. So I just wanna to touch that up, there we go. Now, the reason I like using F-stop to do this, this kind of contrast work is that I have a lot of control about where my midtones and shadows and highlights are just with one slider that's right next to where all my controls are. So if I wanted to, I can come in and just if I slide where that mid-tone position is, let's bring this up a little bit higher. So you can sort of see where that mid-tone position is being effective. So I can come in there and I can just kind of have a bit more control over, over what's going on just very easily with a couple of sliders. So I don't need a lot. I'm just really here just to pump in a, a little bit more local contrast in there just kind of come to the end there just look at that there maybe i've gone a bit too hot on the nose if i have i'll just come back and just touch the highlights down there we go so let's let's play back that little group and that's kind of looking all right except for one thing and this is probably easier if i turn the uh, the scopes on so let's just right click in the viewer turn the scopes on Come in here, look at our waveform. Check out the black point. So the black point on uh, our second clip, is probably around about 120. And on our first clip, it's probably around about 64. So this is looking, you know, less contrasty. And if you like that, that kind of uh, lifted black look, then that's, that's fine. I just kind of think that, you know, when we've got these two clips together, that they should both share a similar black level. So let's come over here and let's see how we can fix this. Now, I don't want to affect anything in this group because if I make any changes to the group, obviously it's going to affect all of the clips in the group. So what I'd need to do is just change this from group post clip back to clip here. And now I can make my change, just sort of take the lift and then just bring it down just a little bit so that the black levels are around about the same place again. Let's have a look there. Yeah, and that's cutting together a lot nicer. So just because we're working with groups doesn't mean that we can't move back and forth between groups and clips and timeline, you know, and be flexible about it. Move back to keyframes so we're not being distracted by the scopes. Okay, and if we go uh, back down the timeline, I do have this other rock clip. Look at the before and after, bypass the color with Shift and D. And this is obviously being affected by the group as well. So far, we've applied changes at a clip level and at a post clip level into the groups. 
Now, the reason that I haven't used a group pre-clip is that I usually reserve this area here for technical changes that I want to make across an entire range of a clip. So say, for example, a, a whole range had a particular color cast that I wanted to get rid of. I would do all of those technical changes in the pre-clip. So then I can make sort of small individual changes in the clip level and make my stylistic changes at a post clip level. So we're working at a, a you know, bit of a hierarchy there. And then at the end of it, I can come in and I can apply an effect across the entire timeline. And I will reserve this to a very small number of effects because these are going to be effects that are going to happen to everything. So this is probably going to be things like giving a, a bit of a, uh, a film look to it or maybe film grain, you know, something that I want to sort of bring everything together, you know, add cohesion to the entire project and kind of lift it up to that last level. Actually, let's, let's come over to this clip here. It doesn't really matter where I place it, but it's, it's nice to have like a face to look at. And I'm going to apply, well, actually, I, I will apply film stocks. And let's come to our effects editor. And Filmstocks has hundreds of presets that we can look at, but I'm just going to filter my presets down a little bit to motion picture films. And I can start to click through here. Actually, let's give us a bit of a before and after. I can start to click through here and find something that I think is going to, you know, support and lift up my image. So do I go a little bit warmer here kind of like that but i also like i think sort of taking it the other way and using something like the uh the fuji f125 or maybe the kodak 5219 i actually think i'm going to use that one and with all of the film stock filters we actually have an amount slider so i can slide this back and sort of mix this back in because this this really is like the uh, final amount of seasoning that I'm going to add to the dish. So if you're cooking, you don't come in right at the very end and just pour in a whole thing of, uh, of salt and just go, oh, yeah, no, that's it. That's my my meal is complete. No, no what you do is you, you maybe sprinkle in a, just a little bit more salt and pepper just to give it that little bit of extra flavor. And so I'm going to mix in an amount, maybe maybe 25 here. And let's turn off my AB and maybe just bring the, the grain up a little bit. Now, grain is going to be one of those things that is actually going to really help us to kind of pull all of this stuff together. Uh, I could spend a lot of time nerding around about in here. But I have the feeling that once this is compressed, once this tutorial is compressed, that this is definitely not going to make it past the, uh, the, uh, the compression that you're going to see. So. Anything I make is going to be very, very tricky to see. Hang on, let's, let's, let's give us a little bit there. I was going to just sort of go completely over the top, but I actually think maybe if I bring my, my amount up, but not too high, you should be able to see the changes that that's making. There, it's a nice bit of, nice bit of grain. And we'll get rid of our range by using Alt or Option X. There we go. Let's start playing that back. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. It's not doing too much. And that's what I like about it. It's just taking those colors and that contrast into a slightly different place. And that's, that's, that really is the role of the, um, of the effect that you add to the, the timeline. So if I go full screen now, let's play that back. And in this tutorial, I've tried to give you a, an idea of how I would approach this type of project in terms of color grading. So the first thing to do is I would separate out my clips into groups. Then once I've done that, any kind of technical changes that I need to make across the group, I can do with the group pre-clip. Any changes that I need to make within a clip, when I had to bring the black level down on this clip here, I would do at the clip level. The stylistic changes that I want to make and add would be done on a group by group basis on a post clip level. And then the final little finishing touches, that final little bit of seasoning, I would then add to the timeline. And obviously I can continue building on this to create my final piece. 
but hopefully you should have an idea now of how I would approach this. If you'd like to learn more about Continuum and even download a free trial, then head on over to BorisEffects.com. If you'd like to see more Resolve tutorials, then please leave a comment below. My name is Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects, and I'll see you again soon.